Hi, this is Ali Arango from Game Visuals, and today I would like to show you how to make collectibles that when you collect them, add to your score in GDevelop 5. So let's get started. Okay, setting this up is not too difficult. Uh, I had not seen any, vid any videos that had someone taking you through step by step in a narrated form like we're going to do here. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to our right hand side. We're going to click this plus button here. We're going to look at these different options that we have. We're going to select Sprite. For the object name, we're going to name this coin. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click this plus to the right. Uh, and this allows us to either bring in a Sprite. So we could bring in a Sprite by clicking this plus button to the left. However, we're going to use this uh, Pisco editor that's built into GDevelop. So we're just going to left click right on the text and that opens up this editor here. What we're going to do now is we're going to go to our primary color here. I'm going to change this to a yellowish color. And I'm just going to click off of that. And now what I'm going to do is go to this circle tool. I'm going to left click here. I'm going to go up to, to you know, the upper left hand corner. I'm just going to pull my mouse to form a circle. I'm then going to go to this paint bucket tool. And then after clicking on, I'm going to click in the center of this circle. I'm going to name this picture that we're making coin. It's really not too important what the picture is actually named, but we'll name it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, save to G develop. So we'll just left click on that. Okay, and uh, with that done, we're just going to click apply for now. Okay, this robot sprite as well as this platform as well as the setup that you see right here is from another tutorial that's on this channel. Uh, I'll put a link so that you can get to that tutorial and in that tutorial, I provide a link to the sprites that uh, you can download and use to follow along with this tutorial, or you can use your own assets if you want. Okay, what we want to do now is I'm going to roll the mouse wheel back. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button and pull to the side. I'm going to left click on this platform right here. While I am selected on it, this platform, you can tell I'm selected on it because you can see it's you know got this highlight and these shapes around it. I'm going to hold the control key. I'm going to left click and drag and pull this to the side. When you hold control and G develop on an uh, item that you're Select it on and drag to the side, you'll duplicate that item. So I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to pan the screen over. I'm going to left click right here, hold control. And then while holding control, I'm going to left click and drag to make another duplicate of the platform. Now I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to pan to the side back towards our player. Okay, what we want to do is make sure that our character can actually jump up onto the platform. So what we're going to do is click this button here. This lets us launch a preview, which lets us actually play our game. I'm going to take, I'm pushing my right arrow. And I'm going to press the jump button, which is the space key. And uh, our character can jump up to that platform. However, we can make it easier for the character to get up there. So what we're going to do is click on this X button. We're then going to double click on our player. We're going to left click on behaviors near the top. We're going to scroll down and we are looking for the jump speed. So we're going to left click next to this jump speed and we're going to change this to 800. We're then going to left click on apply and then we're going to left click on our launcher preview button and try jumping onto that platform again. So I'm going to push the right arrow key and press the space button and now by changing that jump speed to 800, you can see that our character is uh, jumping higher and that's what we want. Now, you can see that the camera isn't following our character, so we can't have our character travel over to the platform after this one. So let's set that up now. So I'm going to left click here to get out of here. And uh, what we want to do is have our camera center on our player as our player moves. So I'm going to left click on game one events. I'm going to make sure that I'm clicked on uh, 
this comment, and I do that just because I want this event, we're about to click this event here, and we want this event to go all the way over to the left here. Uh, this right here you see is from the uh, last tutorial, and uh, our new code will all be right here. So what we're gonna do is left click here to make a new event. Uh, when you make an event, your event is uh, has a, a condition as well as an action. The condition basically says when something happens, and then the action says do this. So in this case, we we are not going to put a condition here because we want gdevelop to look for this action consistently and constantly. So when you don't put a, a condition here, gdevelop will just keep looking for this action, and that's what we want in this case. So we're going to left-click on Add Action. We're going to look for Layers and Cameras. We're going to scroll down and see where we see uh, Center the Camera on an Object. We're going to left-click here. We want the camera to center on our player, so we're going to left click here. Then we're going to left click here just to get that box to go away. The rest of the of the of what you see here, we can leave that default. Then we're going to left click on OK. And just like that, our camera is set up to follow our player. So we're going to left click here to launch our game. Now when we push to the right, you can see that our character can travel along and a camera follows right along with them. So I'm gonna left click on this X to get out of that game preview and we can move on to the next step. Okay, so what is the next step? The next step is we wanna actually pull these coins out. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna left click and drag onto our stage here. Now we have our first collectible right here and uh, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to pan to the side and just like how we made these platforms we're going to left click on our coin hold control this time we're going to hold shift and pull a coin out so when you hold shift that constrains your movement so that this coin is the same uh, height as this coin so now with that done I'm going to hold control again so I'm holding the control key I'm left clicking and dragging and I'm moving another coin up here. So now I'm holding the middle mouse button to pan. I'm gonna hold control again, which I'm doing now. I'm also holding shift. And then I'm, uh, oh, I didn't select it. Okay, so I left click first, now it's selected. Now I can hold control, hold shift, and drag to the side. I'm letting go of control, letting go of shift, holding control, holding shift, dragging to the side again, holding control, holding shift again, because I let go in between. I'm going to hold control, hold shift again. And now that we have these coins here, I'm going to left click here, hold shift. By holding shift, I can select more than one coin. I'm going to roll my mouse wheel to zoom back. And now with all of these coins selected, I'm going to hold control, left click and drag. So now I was able to duplicate all those uh, coins at once. And I'm just going to left click to go off of the coins. Okay, now we need to make it so that our main character, our player, interacts with these coins. How do we do that? We're going to click on Game 1 and Events. Uh, we are then going to... Okay, we're clicked on... See how we have this blue line going around this whole uh, event here? That's what we want because we want to make another event. So we're going to left-click here so we have another event here. And then what we want to do is click Add Condition, go to Common Conditions for All Objects. We want to left-click on Collision, and then left-click on this other collision that just popped up. And then what we want to do is we're going to select Player, as well as the coin. I don't think it matters the uh, order that we have this in, but basically what we're saying is, when, when the player uh, collides with the coin, we want something to happen. So I'm going to left click on OK. So remember I was saying when something happens is what the condition says, then the action says basically you know what to do when that happens. So what we want to happen is when the player collects with the coin, we want it to look like the player is collecting the coin. So we want the coin to disappear. Easiest way to do that is to have the coin uh, be deleted. So what we're going to do is left click on Add Action. 
select common actions for all, go to options, and then we're going to go down to delete an object. So we're going to left click on delete an object, then we're going to select coin. Now just left click to get that menu to pop away, to go away. Then we're going to left click on OK. OK, so we're going to click our launcher preview of the scene button to uh, make sure everything is working correctly. And it is as our player is walking, all of the coins are being collected or deleted. So I'm going to left click on X to get out of that. OK, the reason why all of the coins are disappearing, even though we only set this, co this code once, is because those coins are in instance. I just clicked on this game uh, one button. They're all basically the same object duplicated again and again. OK, so now that we have that, the coins are being collected. Let's make it, I'm going to click back on game, game one events. Let's add, an, an, uh, add a sound so that basically when the coin is collected, we can hear it being collected. So to do that, we're going to left click on add an action. We're going to scroll down to audio. We're going to left click on audio and then we're going to go to play a sound. And I just left click to get that menu to go away. I just click left click and it's gray down here. And uh, one of the very cool things with uh, GDevelop amongst many other cool things, very easy to use, very easy to figure out. And uh,